Hey friends, we're back for another spring prairie activity with Jason the Bird Nerd Saint Sauve. We are right now going to talk about our meadow mammals. So first thing to talk about is what's a mammal, right? What is a mammal? I'm going to start with a real quick pause in this one and I want you to think about what a mammal is, like what makes a mammal a mammal and look that up and come back in about a little bit. All right, so did you look up a mammal? I bet you found out some of the cool things that make a mammal a mammal. One, just like us, they've all got fur. Two, they have live baby births and they provide those babies milk. Those are some of the things that make mammals mammals, right? We're gonna talk about some of the ones that live right here out on the prairie, because mammals love the tall grass prairie. And one of the most famous ones is right behind us. But before we get to that, let's talk about our vocab words and some supplies for this activity. Just like all our other activity, supplies are you, your senses, paper and pencil to write things down or draw, and then if you have them, some other things you can use are a viewer, like maybe a magnifying glass, right? A little jeweler's loop or something like that. A field guide about mammals would be cool. Or if you've got a pet that's furry, that'd be something good to explore. Or some pictures of some mammals, whether they're in a book or online. Uh, or some videos would be great too. So those are some things you could use. Some vocab words for this activity to remember. We've already talked about mammal. Another one is set, camouflage, and then these three go together, carnivore, herbivore, and omnivore. Okay, we'll come back to those in a bit. And we've got some questions that we'll end the activity with. But before we go any farther, let's do one more pause. And I want you to look up camouflage. We're gonna talk about that one a lot. If you already know what it is, that's great. But if not, look it up and learn that word and come right back. All right, we're back. Did you learn about camouflage? We're gonna talk about that on all the animals as we go through, because that's an important adaptation that a lot of our mammals that live in the grassland have. That's when you match your background so that you can hide and not be seen. We're gonna start though with the biggest mammal that we have on the prairie. We don't have them anymore, but some areas do. If you get the chance to go to Pioneers Park Nature Center, one of our partners, they've got bison. So let's talk about those. Bison were one of the biggest animals, other than mammoths, long ago. They lived all over the prairie and extremely important because they grazed. That's the eating that they did. So many of the grasses down and that would be good to have more new grass coming up. So it was good for them to eat, but it was also great for the soil. Their hooves would turn up the soil and then their poop was really good fertilizer as well. So as they grazed in huge herds, they helped the prairie grow more every year. So they're important. Nowadays, we use cows a lot more because we don't have many bison left. Something good to look up, and it might be in one of our questions later, is where did all the bison go? What happened? Okay. But the really cool one, they've had a huge skull. Right? If you look at that, they've got horns because they are horns because they stay on all the time. Antlers, like an animal we're going to talk about later, fall off each year, but horns are always on there. And then they've got huge kind of flat teeth for grinding grains and grasses to eat in there. Something really cool you can see on this skull as well is a cool thing to learn about if you're looking at a fur or a skull and you're not sure what it is. A way to tell if it's predator or prey is to remember this rhyme. Eyes on the side, better to hide. Eyes up front, better to hunt. So this animal had them on the side. So it was most likely prey, right? And with teeth like that, eating only grasses and things, it is an herbivore, right? So we're gonna talk about those terms. Remember, herbivore, carnivore, and omnivore? Bison was an herbivore, only eating the grasses, and it would be prey. Do you know an animal that could eat a bison? Probably things like wolves, coyote, maybe, if they could take a baby that was sick or a really old one that was sick, but otherwise it'd have to be something big. Very important prairie animal. Let's move to our next one. So right over here is one of my favorites. This is the fur and the skull of the American badger. Now, one of the reasons I like this one is it shows so well that word camouflage that we're learning. Look at those cool colors. 
A lot of times if you see it from a distance, it looks, just looks tan, all one color. But the closer you look, those hairs are all different kinds of colors. That is a special pattern of tall grass prairie camouflage. Because what that does is if something else is looking at it, it's hard to tell where it starts or stops. All those different colors help it camouflage, but it's also hard to tell where it begins and where it ends. Now badgers are what's called an omnivore. Mostly eat meat, but they'll also eat some other things too, okay? I've got a cool skull, and one of the ways you can tell is if you look at those teeth, I've got carnivore sharp teeth, but in the back I've got some that are a little flatter for chewing things like berries, nuts if they need to. They also have a sneaky way to hunt. They make a set. They're really good diggers. They've got long claws, and they'll dig up to six entrances into their big house underground on the prairie. That's called their set, their whole home underground. And the set has all those entrances, but they don't stay in it for more than a year. They'll move and dig another one, and then they'll go dig another one. And what they'll do is when they go out at night to hunt, because they are nocturnal, they will go from a set, an old set, to another one and hunt and see if like a rabbit or anybody else has moved in there and they will eat them or try to anyway. It's a very sneaky thing. You can also tell they're an underground dweller. It's hard to tell with this fur, but they have really tiny ears, little nubs. They wouldn't want big ears living underground. They'd get them filled with dirt all the time. Plus they use their nose a lot more at night to hunt than they do their ears. And again, remember that cool, um, Rhyme we learned about with the bison, eyes up front, better to hunt. So this is definitely more of a predator. If its eyes were more on the side, it would be prey. All right, let's see who our next prairie mammal is. We're gonna scoot this way just a little bit. Oh, who do you think this one is? Before I tell you, let's take a quick pause and take a look at that fur and skull and see if you can take a guess. Did you guess deer? If you did, you are correct. This is the hide and the skull of a white-tailed deer from right here near Spring Creek Prairie. All right? Again, just like the badger, it's got great prairie camouflage because if you can see close on these fur hairs, they are many different colors. From a distance, it all looks brown, but there's black and white and tan and cream and all kinds of colors in there. And if we had the whole fur, right at the end, there'd be a big white tail that the white-tailed deer uses to follow each other in line, like a big flag that they wave it back and forth. It's a really cool animal. It's a little rougher because they need to survive the winter. They don't get to go underground like that badger does to stay warm. They're going to be outside, but they will go into the trees to stay warm or maybe in all that tall grass out there. Could you imagine trying to see that in all that tall grass? It'd be hard to find. Again, you can look at their skull and try to decide if it's predator or prey. Eyes are on the side, so it's better to hide. This is a prey animal. And you can look at their teeth too and see. And again, they're pretty flat, a little ridges, but not too many and no sharp ones. So they're basically an herbivore, only eating grasses. So, so far we've learned about omnivore in the badger and we've got an herbivore in the deer and an herbivore in our bison. Let's go to our very last animal and see what we have on the prairie. This is probably our most vocal animal on the prairie, the one that makes the most noise, especially at night, and that is a coyote or coyote, right? Again, look at that amazing prairie camouflage, right? Many different colors making it hard to see, but all kinds of colors of light brown and tan so they can match the uh, prairie grasses, especially in the summer and fall. They've got a canine tail and they've got an amazing nose. It's hard to see here, but they hunt a lot by nose and sound. So again, not like the badger, much bigger ears for hearing at night. They do den underground, um, like the badger, but not as much. They will be outside more if they can be. Now, if you look at that skull, what's the rhyme again? Eyes on the side, better to hide. Eyes up front, better to hunt. So this is a predator. You can also tell that by those teeth. Look at those big canine teeth, right? But what's funny is most people would guess 
that a coyote is a carnivore, when they're actually an omnivore. Right? There's very few animals that are completely carnivores. Most of them will eat, especially if resources are slim, just about anything. There's videos of coyotes eating crab apples and fruit, wild plums on the prairie. With these back teeth, they'll grind those up. But they do like to eat rabbit and other things, especially out here in the prairie. They might eat our prairie chickens, our bobwhite, or our pheasants too, if they can catch them. Very, very cool animals. And again, the most vocal at night, They'll yip and howl to each other um, across the prairie. It's a really fun noise to hear. So a fun thing to do, let's pause here and everybody howl together on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Ow, ow, ow! All right, we're back. We've talked about all of our mammals. There's so many more. So think if you can think of other mammals that might live out on the prairie. There's probably lots more. We learned about camouflage, omnivores, carnivore, which only eats meat, and herbivores, only eating plants, right? And we're gonna go full circle and end right back over here by our chart and with the bison. We're gonna wrap up with a review of our vocab words and get a few questions out there about mammals. So to review, we learned about mammal and what that is. We learned what a set is, right? That's a badger's hole. We learned all kinds of different camouflage, especially that cool prairie camouflage. And then we learned the difference between carnivore, herbivore, and omnivore. Okay, here's some questions to end this activity about meadow mammals. Okay, can you name three mammals that live in the tall grass prairie? I'm sure you can. To make it even harder, see if you can name three that we didn't talk about. Okay. What animal used to graze the prairie before we had cows all over it? And why aren't those animals grazing there now? What happened to them? And finally, can you name two mammals with the best prairie camouflage? Think of which ones might be able to hide the best. What mammals right out there in the tall grass of the prairie? Thanks guys, we'll be back with another activity soon.